So this vlog is going to be the end of season roundup. I've been trying for the last few days to sit in a field with a horse or in a stable or just go somewhere pleasant rather than in my chair <laughs> at 10 o'clock at night. Um, feeling like a scrag, ready for bed. But it's been, been blowing a bloody gale for the last four days, so it's been impossible to do anything that hasn't been do anything that hasn't been so noisy and you've not been able to hear me. So um, I'm back in my chair with you looking back up my nose just for a end of year roundup. So the last three day slog as it were um started with blenheim that's one of my favorites um i love blenheim and how exciting it was just to be back to be back doing proper three days really having a name from the summer to be you know the moment you drove in the gates you realized there was a purpose it was re it was really exciting and just meant a lot and well done the jockey club and thank you to them um and I just really hope it's just the start of things trying to get back to a little bit more normality. And it was just great for owners and everyone to be back at somewhere really great. And it was a cool week um, for me. I took three horses and three really exciting horses for the future, all doing their first um, competition at the level that they were doing it at. And so I had Brookfield Quality Sportsfield Top Notch, they were both in the four star long, and Cooley Lanster in the four star short, which is the eight and nine year old class. And they were all really great, and we had a fab week. And Cooley Lancer was did his first advanced as as an eight year old, and he's missed quite a lot of um, the year and the end of last year through having an irritating splint that we in the end got rid of. And, and so he's a little bit low on mileage. And so I just went there really for experience. And he's such a fantastic jumper. And he's such a brave horse that I knew he could deal with the experience from his natural ability and where he's at. So even though he was slightly low of mileage, I was still very excited to just get in there and see what he was about. And there are still little green bits in his dressage test of just his his strength and and everything but his brain was great and then he jumped in the morning and it was he could barely see in the morning to be honest it was, it was so much fog and this year we jumped early in the morning for the eight and nine year olds which actually preferred rather than so late in the day but it was such a foggy morning it was it was quite hard to actually see but he was he was great he jumped a beautiful clear round for just a couple of seconds over the time um but he was, he was super. And then well, he went round the cross country like he was on rails and had just done it all his life. And, you know, didn't care at all the people, the occasion, the size of jumps, the harder technicality or anything. He just got it done, ate it up. I again was two seconds over, which I easily could have done something about. I sort of slightly thought at the beginning I'd just hold his hand and make sure that he was happy, but there was just no need to. He was an absolute beast. He just galloped and ran and jumped and such an exciting horse for the future. A really beautiful horse. So um, he did that and I actually called him a day there. He had done, you know, a little bit of crash course to get there. And so we finished that with the view that, you know, we'll crack on again next year. But what a, what a wonderful aim to have at the end of the year and a wonderful horse he is. Um, and then Brookfield Quality did his first full star long and did a lovely dressage test. And the exciting thing is, is there's way much more to come as well. But he, he lay second after um, the two days of dressage and he was quite early. He had an early draw. So I thought at the time he would have, you know, probably just stayed in the top 10. But brilliant dressage judging in the way that they kept very very consistent and he still stood his ground after two days of, of he actually did a lovely test and just point something off the off the leader more there to come 
Um, I was delighted with getting clear around in, inside the time because he's been a horse that I've not found the easiest to go quick. And I was, you know, the quicker I sometimes tried to go, the slower I ended up going because I don't find him the easiest to um, alter and change his stride pattern um, and shorten. So I end up wasting quite a lot of time at jumps. And Emily Chandler was actually someone that was brilliant to go to to help me with bitting and nose bands because my bit box is not very <laughs> exciting and once I get out of my two or three normal things that I go to and if it's not working I, I don't really know where to start going so it's always good and handy to have mates <laughs> that um, have lots of kind of gadgets or have some ideas so I went over to Ems and she had a canter track there and we tried a few things on and we ended up with a just going back to a normal English loose ring gag, a big gag, bubble, um, big ringed gag, and a kind of to nose band. Um, done, you know, um, done up well, so it doesn't move about, and it really helped. It made such a massive difference, and so he romped around very clear inside the time. And it didn't feel like I was having to be so agricultural or um, hard work for him or me. So um, I thank Emily a lot for helping me with that. So he was still second after cross country and sort of nearly over jumped in the show jumping. He was trying so hard to jump and clear the fences that he was just sort of going higher and higher. And sadly, the middle rail of the combination just just caught him. But. You know, he still finished fifth at Blenheim, first attempt, and it, you know, it was it was fabulous. It was very exciting, and the same thing applied for our own Sportsful Top Notch, that I think is a is a lovely horse as well for the future. He's definitely going to be a five star horse in my opinion, and you know that was his first one. He was two marks off the lead in the dressage, lying sixth after the cross country, two rails down at Blenheim. No big deal. Blenheim, I think, to me, is one of the biggest show jumping tracks that we have on the circuit at a three day. The time is always really tight, good skinny jumping poles. And, you know, you have to get on with it and you can jump a very good round for two down, which is what, what Puff did. So I was actually delighted. I know it's obviously when you get to these things, it's very expensive. But as a horse for the future, he's a lovely one. And they all came out of it really well. Um... So I enjoyed my week. I was very interested in going there with the horses that I had and um, I was delighted coming away that there's very exciting horses there for the future. So that was cool. And then off we went to the Europeans, which um, it was really cool to be going to. It was cool to have that aim. I loved competing on the teams and what a team we had. Full of girls, girl power, yes, um, and a very, very strong team. And I mean, oh my word, you just can't even write it. You thought it was, you know, there was a strong team going there, but to finish first, second, and third, and be the team gold was unbelievable. It was, it was so exciting, and it was um, a great competition. I've never been there before, Switzerland, Avanche. Um, and they did a great job in the time that they had to get it up and going. It really felt like a championship. It was a proper championship track. And I was put in the team, which was cool. And number one to go for the team, which I've never been before. Um, but as I said, I'm surely old enough and ugly enough to deal with that sort of position now. And... He was fabulous. Brookfield Innocent was an absolute beauty. And in all three bits, he obviously, you know, went early, did a lovely test. Um, the only thing I could have, would have liked to have done again or could have said could have been better was our first flying change was just a little bit shorter. It was fine. It wasn't a late change and I didn't miss it. Um, but it was a little bit shorter and he was the first one to you know, really go low, low 20s. So I was over the moon with, with him, where he was, how hard he tried, how he felt. So that was cool, a good start. And then the cross-country course was 
really twisty walking it but to be honest this horse is is a galloper he's a really fast horse he's a quick thinking horse he's very good on his feet and to be honest even if you've got a very long gallopy wide stretch course he could do it as, as easily as he can a twisty course so I'm so lucky there with him that even though it was unbelievably twisty when you first walked it you just thought this is you know, I've got to walk this about 18 times to remember where I've got to go on here because it was quite confusing for the first couple of walks you did of making sure you got the right side of the string or or knew exactly where you were going. So um, it was, you know, but he was, he was fabulous. He was one of the first to go and goodness, I'm, I'm lucky and how quick and easy he was and how, how easy he made it feel. So I'm hoping that was a good... That stood everyone in good stead for the rest of the day and gave a team GB a you know confident feel for the for the day ahead. Um, not that anyone need, needed it. I mean they were amazing and it was just amazing sitting back and watching the the caliber of horses that Team GB have right now is unbelievable. The younger ones coming up, you know, riders with good horses. Um, it's just absolutely incredible to watch and very exciting to be a part of. You have to feel desperately sad, sorry for dear Roz, who just took it on the chin like the true professional that she is and the true horseman that she is. We all know the drills, the ups and downs of horses. We all know how easily things can, you know, how fine the line is of it going great and, and not. And All Star B has done nothing wrong for a long time and has won so much and you know he did she took one for the team of going to Tokyo with him he's an older horse and going through the heat and going through all the training without the run and everything maybe did take its toll in the end and you know who knows but as Ross said it surprised her as much as it did anyone and they're a fabulous combination you know one of the best in the world and they'll be back it just goes to show even more that Horses and situations, it's not its not a dead cert and horses aren't machines. And as much as you thought, oh, Rosie will be fine, um, it just sometimes doesn't happen. And, and you know, she's an out-and-out -out champion in my eyes anyway, and she and him will be back. And she, every inch deserved every bit of being there and on the team and taking home a gold medal because that that's her as a sports person through and through and um, you know it was a great week a great team atmosphere um, and very very exciting for the future I have to say of um, you know even the individuals there Izzy and Monkey and Round she's done a great job with Monkey he's only going to come on from that show and and Sarah and her little ginger pony that is a little pony that's an absolute weapon I mean the little thing is um, is full of character and scope and you know what a little future that has as well so all exciting times ahead and to, it was really cool I was delighted for my horse for me personally I just wanted him to go there and, and look as cool as I know he is um, and for the owners to go there and enjoy it like they enjoyed it you know we all had a great time and to be part of being on team GB and you know knowing that you know for the horse he got there fresh and well from um you know an awful very difficult decision that they had in the summer of just not putting him on a plane to travel to Tokyo to just you know stand there as the reserves had to so all in all it ended out for him and John and Chloe Perry and Alison Swinburne. Just great. A really happy, happy ending. A, a, a super week and something that we'll always remember forever and be very fond of our week in Switzerland. And so we're straight back from Europeans to head to Osbiton Young Horse Championship, which um, I hate being away for those few weeks building up to um, a young horse championship a great team at home 
that can keep everything going and everything ticking over it's just getting that consistency that that you know bond back with your horses when you get there is quite quick and you know a few days rush to to get there and and get going so um i ended up with just a a few there and on the whole everything was was absolutely fine it was um i had a couple in the six-year-olds it was blowing a gale when we got there wet stormy week um and my six-year-olds had a second in there with brookfield future news and he was really cute um did an absolutely gorgeous test on their day one and jumped clear across country to just an unlucky rail which cost him the win um show jumping afterwards it was a whole new new format this year um even in all the young horse classes five-year-old six-year-old and seven-year-old show jumping after the cross country which we've never done at osberton before and trotting up before show jumping so it was all um quite a lot of hard work for the girls for the grooms as well to to be doing extra trot ups for the horses you know some you know we decided with the five-year-olds it wasn't necessarily what they had to do to jump afterwards you know if they're a bit blood or a bit weak of of thinking that's what they um had to do but in the end it worked really well um it worked well for the horses and they did jump well on the third day um Cooley, anything you like is a beautiful horse that i think is is a five-star horse for the future with his his type scope gallop and he had a, his first ever cross-country fault which was very annoying of having a runoff of a skinny and he actually really didn't get it the line felt good the stride felt good i felt that i totally had him and he was the last two three strides trying to jinx left and right all into it i kept a fair old hold and managed to you know take the flag out and um whack his knee on the side of it and all the rest of it so it's we had a fair old go of trying to get over it but even the second time coming back round he was not clear that that was the fence and it was you know a triple brush skinny that we see plenty of but I think just how it was positioned it was definitely the bogey fence of the competition and caused enough of its enough problems there and for whatever reason he didn't um he's done plenty of skinny practice and never thought left or right before so you take that on the chin and it's a baby mistake um he finished the competition well and jumped fantastic on the last day and without that mistake he would have won um so as disappointing irritating it is for the um owners and at the time i just felt in my own mind i'd done everything that i could and it was just a very green mistake of the horse's part and I'm always the first to be very critical of myself that I should have done this or should have done that. But um, sometimes they don't read things. They don't get it. And to me, that felt like one of those times. But as I said, he's a very exciting horse for the future. And we won't hold that against him. Just annoying at the time. Um, I had a seven-year-old, Cooley Goodwood, who finished fourth in the sevens and just jumped fantastic. Um, he came out on the third day really pinging um a lovely jumping horse and so that was that was very good for him and then i diablo joe in the three star long just sadly rolled a few poles got a bit muddy there by the sunday and sadly a few poles down obviously at osberton you know one pole down cost you about 20 places <laughs> so a few poles took us out of out of contention um which was such a it's it's always such a shame when they they give their all and feel so fab as they did on the cross country but you know there's winter's work to be done and and you know you just take it as i said before i don't like those few weeks when you're away as much as you are um but you just have to get on with it and you have to take the good from it what you've learned from them the good bits from it what learned from the bad bits as well and move on and look forward to you know your next aims next year or what can make things better and how to progress um and that was actually i've not really been finished by osberton before but we had a few have a quiet run out at osberton at the end of the year we, um at osby i was meant to say 
um, we took a few there just for the one day event which all picked up nice prizes Coolie Can Do she was third in the intermediate all intermediate runs little um, our old fella had another intermediate run as well they didn't have a three day aim this year and I think just because they're a certain age doesn't mean they have to do age classes they have to do you know every horse is different and that's what I was sort of wanting to try and get from some of these videos to sort of help people or understand just because they are a certain age and that you feel you have to be doing this class or that class um, I'm a great believer in letting my horses try to tell me when they're ready when I feel the training's right when they're happy when I feel I've got that partnership that they're ready to go to the to the next level and I was just delighted that they managed to finish you know a one day event feeling like they've all really come on and then ready for the next next level that we can start on with next year um so yes we've not gone abroad at all for the end of this year after the Europeans no Buclo, no Leon no Poe um and so we finished the year when I finished at the end of September we finished in in the lead of the points for end of September which actually surprised me because I didn't feel I'd actually had anywhere near as busy a year as we normally do or with the any of the the three days and so um that was a surprise and a pleasant surprise at the end of the September we were um leading the BE points but obviously we're not eventing in October and doing a month of that then we won't be um at all but it's um it's very exciting to also be at home and sit and watch um Leon and Poe and so you know um it's just it's just good sport it's just nice to be at home we've had a half term now with Maxie that's actually been absolutely lovely to come back I'm just looking in the background I've got a picture of Maxie with us there um carving out pumpkins and doing all sorts of crazy stuff which is actually just you know really lovely before the winter kicks in to actually just have some time and um spend some time there so that's all been really cool